Welcome to Today with Marilyn and Sarah. Oh my goodness, are we excited to be with you today? And I have this question. Have you ever been afraid? <laughs> You're like, is the Pope Catholic? Are you kidding me? Of course, we've all been afraid. And afraid of what? I mean, some of us are afraid. The things you are afraid of, I might not be. The things I'm afraid of, you might not be. But the issue is, as a human, we, we have brushes, experiences, challenges with fear. Some of us are better at it than others. But this classic teaching, it's going to be super powerful from mom on how to overcome. What, where is God when I'm afraid? And you know, partners, I just want to thank you so much. You help us to cover the earth with the word and connect everyone to the heart of God. So we couldn't do what we do, couldn't minister on fear and have classic teachings from my mom uh, without our partners. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you immensely. And as you're watching right now, you might have a need in your life. Get on the phone, get on the website, give us the opportunity, privilege of getting to pray for you. And just to encourage you, uh, we received a testimony from Patricia and Patricia had been diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And she called, we got to pray for her. She got on the website, we, we prayed for her and she was healed of thyroid cancer. I give you that encouragement because again, those testimonies encourage you that nothing's impossible with God. No situation, no, no circumstance, no hardships, difficulty, impossible. Nothing is impossible with God, including fear right? So you're going to join a classic teaching. And one of the things I love about the word of God is it is classic. It is timeless. So you're watching this teaching with my mom now, and it is a classic. I mean, timeless might've been from a little while ago, but it doesn't mean it's any less true because the word of God is always true, always timeless. Watch this now. The teaching you are about to watch is part of the Marilyn Hickey classic collection. We believe the word of God is timeless, eternal, and cannot return void. Our prayer is that this teaching will build your faith and bless your life as you grow in His Word. Now this morning, I want you to just take out pen and paper and put at the top of your page, where is God when I'm afraid? Where is God when I'm afraid? And those of you who are reading through the Bible and you are up to date, we have a wonderful book. This is my favorite book God ever gave me. It's Meditation, How to Meditate on the Word, which is the number one key to success. It's Joshua 1.8. And this is my lifestyle. I love this book. So you can get it back at the information table. And if you're behind, catch up and then tell them, I'm going to get it now. Okay? So Because I so want you to have that book. It's so life-changing. Where is God when I'm afraid? You know, fear is a terrible thing. And there's no one sitting here this morning that can say, well, I'm never afraid. You know, you face fears on some level all the time. This week, I had the most awful dream in the night around 2.30 in the morning. I dreamt that somebody broke into our house and really harmed us. When I awakened, the dream was so real to me, I got up and went down the steps and checked the doors and turned on the porch lights, you know, because it was just, ugh. Then I went back to bed, couldn't go to sleep because the dream kept echoing to me. That is a fear, isn't it? And fear is an awful thing because it has torment. Put your hand on your heart. Say, I won't forget. Fear, fear has torment. And you know, God doesn't want us to be tormented. And I believe Satan rules through fear more than any one way. If you want to write it down, this is the truth. Satan rules through fear. But God rules through love. You know, and the fear of God, of course, is a respect and an honoring of God. But behind our respect and honoring of God, God loves us. And God loves us even when we're naughty and bad and rotten, ugly, horrible sinners. God loves us. But Satan hates us. And if you want to get just a quick definition of fear, fear is faith in the devil. Say that with me. Fear is faith in the devil. Now, this message this morning is to help you to deal with fear and not that I'm going to say this morning, oh, you're going to stand up and you're going to be free from fear forever. I'm going to show you what to do when fear comes because the enemy, you know, he doesn't leave you forever. He, he'll wait for a season when you resist him, but then he'll come back. And fear can be a very progressive thing too. 
And fear opens the door for the devil to move. It's his number one weapon against you, and, and it opens the door. You say, well, what makes you think it opens the door? Because Job said, the things that I feared came upon me. So Job would say to you, if he were here and he could talk to you this morning and give you his testimony, you know, I opened the door when I began to fear. Now, what did he fear? I think we know what he feared. He feared he would lose everything he had. Do you ever have the devil tell you you're going to lose everything you have? I have. He feared he would lose his children. Do you ever have the devil tell you you'd lose your children? I'm sure he feared he'd lose his marriage because she said to him, why don't you curse God and die? So all these things. He feared he would lose his health. Did you ever get a fear that you had cancer or something horrible in your body? Yes, all those things. But folks, if you keep entertaining that fear, you open the door for the devil to take everything you have to destroy your children, destroy your marriage, and destroy your body. So the stakes are very high. They are very, very high. Now, I looked at fear because there is good fear and there is bad fear. There is fear that is terror and there is fear that is honoring God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So there is bad fear, but there's also good fear. It's fear where it is focused. So I thought, well, I'm going to look at the very first mention of fear in the Bible. And this is in Genesis 9, 2. And it said, And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth, upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Do you know God doesn't want you to be afraid? He wants the devil and his crowd to be afraid of you. You're the one that's supposed to be putting fear on people and circumstances and satanic forces. They're not supposed to be doing it to you. So we need to reverse this thing, right? I think sometimes we've reversed our shoes. We've got the wrong shoe on. We're afraid all the time. And we say, I wonder why I'm having such a problem walking around. Because we're walking wrong. We put our shoes on wrong. We should be making the devil afraid. He should be afraid when you get out of bed in the morning. But instead, you're afraid what he's going to do to you today. We've got to reverse this thing. This is horrible. <laughs> so I have to change my shoes here. We, we have to reverse it because it is not biblical. The first mention of fear in the Bible is that we're putting fear on the devil's crowd. They're not putting fear on us. And then we see that fear, if you don't deal with it, you'll be lying and you'll do things you would not normally do. You know, Abraham, the great man of faith, lied. Big time lied. And when he opened that door, if you remember, Isaac did the same kind of lying. So fear, the stakes are so high. Once you open the door to a fear, then the same fear can come on your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. And Abraham said, this is Genesis 20, 11. This is the second time fear is mentioned, but it's not Abraham uh, operating or thinking or acting correctly. He said, because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place, they will slay me for my wife's sake. So he said, I told you that Sarah was my sister. He said, because I knew the fear of God was not in this place and that you would kill me to get my beautiful wife. Well, you know, Abimelech, he took Sarah, was going to sleep with her, but he had a dream, and God said, touch her, man, and you're dead. Well, how many of you think that put a little fear on Abimelech? And he called Abraham in and said, you know, I was innocent in this. You lied to me. And he said, why did you lie to me? And Abraham said, basically, because I was afraid. But notice Abimelech got afraid of Abraham and said, please pray for me. And the first healing prayer in the Bible is given at this time by Abraham because God wanted the shoes reversed, right? He doesn't want us afraid of the devil. He wants the devil scared to death of us because he knows, the devil knows, that if we get hold of the word and look him in the eye and speak the word, he's going to have to move. So I looked at fear and I thought, here is basic fear that so attacks me, so attacks you, and how can I deal with it, and how can I walk in a freedom from it, and how can I keep it from progressive stages in my life? And I know people who are watching this television program, every one of you, this fits everybody, because we all hit fear. Now, I found in the Old Testament there are 21 words for fear, and all of them just kind of have different meanings, different shades of meaning. So this morning, if we talked about fear, and I had time for everybody to stand up and tell what their fear is, 
you know, you would say, well, you know, maybe I'm afraid of cancer or I'm afraid of losing my family. And they're just progressive kinds. So I'm just going to tell you some of the meanings of the word. I'm not going into all 21. But Psalms 119.39 says, to be crushed with terrible terror and horror. You know, sometimes, folks, fear is so bad, it crushes you. And it absolutely becomes a phobia. All phobias come from fear. And a phobia is something that directs your life. It takes over, and it is almost as though you don't have a choice in it. You just get so uptight. This is a phobia, to be crushed with terrible terror and horror. Then another thing we see, that it can mean a reproach that breaks you down. Fear is a reproach that breaks you down. It has such high stakes with it if you let it in the door. And I have found if I start entertaining it in my mind, I start this way, I start with an imagination. I notice fear attacks your imagination. And I begin to see in my mind that thing coming to pass. God's Word is always relevant. We pray you were enriched by one of Marilyn's classic Bible teachings. Have you ever wondered where God is when you're afraid? No matter your fear, God provides a way to overcome it. For your gift of $29 or more, we will send you the classic DVD teaching by Marilyn, Where is God When I'm Afraid? In this timeless message, Marilyn looks at the lives of biblical giants like Abraham, Joshua, David, and Esther. Learn how God helped them overcome their fears and gave them great victories. We will also send you Marilyn's Read It, Speak It, Do It book and her Breaking Free From Fear booklet. For your gift of $90 or more, we will also send you The Names of God Afghan. This beautiful blanket will fill you with faith and surround you with warmth. Be encouraged. You can have victory over all your fears. Call or click today for this anointed resource. That's such amazing teaching from mom. Oh my goodness, I love her classic teachings. I'm always reminded when I was growing up, you know, I was, she always sat, we'd do Bible studies or Bible stories. She always told me these Bible stories and they were always classic timeless. And even to this day, I still have them and they marinate in my heart. But you might be watching right now and, and you have needs in your life, financial needs, physical needs. Maybe you have some emotional issues that are going on. You have some family uh, relationship dynamics. We would love to pray for you no matter what the need is in your life. So hop on the phone, get on the website, give us the privilege and honor of getting to pray for you and encourage you in this faith that nothing is impossible for God in your life, even today. I start with an imagination. I notice fear attacks your imagination. And I begin to see in my mind that thing coming to pass. I see my child maybe in a car accident. I see them in the ditch. I begin to entertain in my mind how, oh, we've stepped out too far. Here we are going to Africa. Here we are having this big New York crusade. What made us ever do two big things like this right in a row? I am I sick? Uh. And I can wake up and just worry myself to shreds over it. Or I can say, wait a minute. You know, God is bigger than New York. He's bigger than Africa. I put my faith and confidence in him and go back and rehearse my victories and not get into fear. But if I get into my imagination, I can see the New York crusade and only a few thousand people show up. Oh, we were expecting 20 and we have two. And I can, I mean, how many of you know what I'm talking about is the truth? Say it's the truth. And your imagination can just take it. And once it gets into your imagination, then it gets into your emotions. Everybody say emotions. Because fear is progressive. Then once it gets into your imagination and your emotions, let me tell you, you surrender your will to it and you make decisions out of fear instead of decisions out of faith. And so it progresses, but it starts with you picturing in your mind. And that's where you've got to stop it. You've got to recognize it. Now, let's look in the New Testament. In the New Testament, there are nine Greek words for fear. And they worry from to be alarmed or to be frightened out of one's wits. Sometimes you can, you're just alarmed about something. You just have a little fear that kind of comes along and nibbles at you. But sometimes you are frightened out of your wits. What on earth could this be? Right before we went to Egypt, I had a physical condition in my body. And it just happened very quickly, like the day before we were to leave for Egypt. And my imagination wanted to come on and really come on strong. You don't have time to have this checked out. 
This could be cancer. You remember so-and-so? They had symptoms like this. And I could see in my imagination cancer coming back from Egypt, going to the hospital. You should have taken care of this sooner. You're going to be dead in three months. Do you ever get into that kind of junk? I mean garbage. And so your imagination begins to picture all these things, and it begins to frighten you out of your wits. But we don't have to yield to it. We do not have to yield to it in any way. Everybody say, I don't have to yield to fear. I have faith. Now, I've noticed faith goes the other way. First of all, faith starts with an act of your will. Fear captivates you with your imagination, your emotions, then gets your will, and you act out of the fear. But faith starts with your will. I make a decision. Instead of being afraid, I'm going to trust God. There is a gorgeous little scripture that when you wake up in the night and you're afraid, let me give it to you. Write it down. Put it in the front of your Bible. Memorize it. Speak it. Tell your children about it. It's Psalms 56.3. It says, when I am afraid, I will trust in God. You know, I had a friend say to me the other day, you know what I do with fear? When I wake up in the night and I'm afraid, I say, I trust in God. And she said, I'll say it maybe five or ten times. I trust in God. I'm not going to be afraid. When fear comes upon me, I'm going to trust in God. And she said, I'll go back to sleep and I'll get out of that. But see, faith, you surrender your will. Once you surrender your will and say, God, I believe you're going to do something good. You're going to make this work for good in my body. Now, by the way, I came back from Egypt, went and had, you know, a checkup, and they said, this is some little nicky knack thing that can be cleared up with just something simple. Isn't the devil stupid? But aren't we stupid to listen? Correct? So first of all, you have to surrender your will to faith. I have made a decision. I'm not going to listen to the devil on this. I'm going to have faith, and I'm going to take God's word. What time I'm afraid? I'm going to trust in the Lord. Then what happens? If you get into your imagination, if you would imagine good things happening to you instead of bad things, and you begin to meditate and see yourself well, see yourself healthy, see yourself coming back from Egypt strong, see yourself prospering, see your marriage just sweet and wonderful. You're always kissing on your husband. He's always kissing you back. He takes you out to dinner. He remembers your birthday. He fixes your car. He shovels the walks. Oh, what a wonderful husband. And you begin to imagine this happening. Folks, that's the way faith is really birthed. It gets into the imagination too. And once it gets into the imagination, it gets into your emotions. But it, it starts with surrendering your will that I'm going to look at faith instead of looking at fear. Now, negative fear. Everybody say negative fear. Now, Romans 8, 28 says that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. Can negative fear be used by God for a good thing? Yes, he can. And here in 2 Chronicles, it says that uh, 17, 10, and the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdom of the lands that were round about Judah, so that they made no war against Jehoshaphat. Now, what happened here? Jehoshaphat was a king. He was a very godly king. And he made godly decisions for his nation. And all the countries around could have attacked him. He's just a little tiny country, just nestled there. Could have really been ripped off, ripped off everything else. But he put his faith in God and said, God, I'm going to trust you. And this was the, the timing, you know, when nations were coming down and attacking Israel and taking them captive. And what makes him think he's going to be safe? He thought God was big enough to make him safe. Is God big enough? So what did God do? Instead of Jehoshaphat having fear, God put fear on the nations against Jehoshaphat. You see, folks, God will put fear on our enemies that they are afraid to touch us. They're afraid to fire you because you're a godly person. You won't swear. You won't drink. You won't tell dirty jokes. You don't take drugs, and you don't think adultery is right. And they're afraid to touch you because you're godly. Did you know God can put fear on ungodly people about you? There have been people that have backed off with me and said, I wouldn't touch you with a 10-foot pole. Well, why wouldn't you? Because you have God in your life, and you scare me. Folks, God will put fear on other people Instead of us being afraid of them, he'll make them afraid of us. God will take negative fear and use it in our favor. The first time I went to Pakistan, I wanted to advertise in the big newspapers. These are Islamic newspapers. 
So the committee came to me and said, uh, we don't want you to do this because we think you're just inviting radical Islamic people to come and kill you. Don't do it. We don't want you to do it. Well, I prayed about it. I had great peace about it. I had great peace about it. So I said to them, would you just come to my room and pray with me? And uh, if, if I have a witness and you have a witness that it's all right to do this, could we do it? I said, I don't want to just take your word because I feel like you're acting out of fear. So they said, okay, we'll do that. So nine of them came up to the room, and we prayed. God, what is your will? Should we advertise in big Islamic newspapers? And I saw, and I rarely ever see angels, I saw an angel standing by the door. And he was so tall, his head almost touched the ceiling. And I said, we are going to advertise because the angels are with us. They will protect us. They, so the, they said, okay, we'll try it. But we don't think the papers will accept your ads because our ads said, you know, come and be healed. We didn't say anything about Jesus. We just said, come and be healed. But do you know what? The Islamic page, papers put us in, and we had all kinds of people who came, and I didn't get killed. Why? Because we have angels who will protect us. And personally, I believe the devil was afraid to touch us. I think there was so much prayer and we had so much anointing around us, the devil thought, if I touch him, I've had it. I think he backed off. I think he backs off a lot of times when we go out in some of these circumstances that God calls us into. I think the enemy has plans for us and gets afraid to carry them out because he that is in us is greater than he that's in the world. Don't let fear look you in the eye. You look fear in the eye. And God will take the very fear that is upon you and put it on your enemies, and they'll be afraid of you. This is in 2 Chronicles 19.7. It's another one. Wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. Folks, when we fear God and we don't respect persons and we don't bow to people, it says the fear of man brings a snare. We start being more afraid of people than we are afraid of God, we're going to get in trouble. And see, that brings a snare. That opens a door. Fear opens these terrible doors. But if you will fear God more than you fear people, God will put the fear of God on the people that are around you. And they won't touch you. You will touch them with the anointing of God that's on you. Now, I looked at some other things here about the progressiveness of it. So I'm going to give you the nine kinds of fear that basically work in the New Testament. But more than you uh, just hearing about fear this morning, I want you to get set free. If you're sitting in here with some kind of a phobia, you know, I can't walk outside of here because if I breathe the air, I'll die. Or I'm, you know, you have, we, I hear some of the craziest phobias I've ever heard in my life that people are getting because what they're entertaining the enemy and listening to him. So this morning, you could get set free. Could you be free? Could Jesus set you free? Could Jesus turn you around? Could you switch shoes and put them on the right feet? Then you could walk out of here bold and strong. Absolutely. Now, here's the thing that satanic fear brings. So just kind of check it out. It brings terror. It brings anxiety. You worry. It brings trembling. It brings anger which kind of is a shock. Fear can make you angry and make you react in a wrong way. It brings horror. It brings heaviness that makes you depressed. It makes you timid when you ought to be bold. It oppresses you, and it frightens you out of your wits. These are the manifestations of fear. God's Word is always relevant. We pray you were enriched by one of Marilyn's classic Bible teachings. Have you ever wondered where God is when you're afraid? No matter your fear, God provides a way to overcome it. For your gift of $29 or more, we will send you the classic DVD teaching by Marilyn, Where is God When I'm Afraid? In this timeless message, Marilyn looks at the lives of biblical giants like Abraham, Joshua, David, and Esther. Learn how God helped them overcome their fears and gave them great victories. We will also send you Marilyn's Read It, Speak It, Do It book and her Breaking Free From Fear booklet. For your gift of $90 or more, we will also send you The Names of God Afghan. This beautiful blanket will fill you with faith and surround you with warmth. Be encouraged, you can have victory over all your fears. Call or click today for this anointed resource. I 
love, I love that God's word is timeless. No matter when it happens, when you hear it, when it's recorded, God's word is timeless and it is powerful. And I just encourage you today that you might have any kind of financial needs, fear, fear needs in your life. You might be struggling with fear and you're afraid to go out. You're afraid of getting sick. You're afraid of catching. You're afraid of, you know, like a foreclosure. You're afraid of losing your job. You're afraid of not getting accepted into college. You're afraid of your marriage dissolving. You're afraid you won't get married. I mean, pick something, right? I mean, we all probably have a menu. You might be afraid of arachnophobia, spiders, right? <laughs> you're like, well, but as a human, that's part of, of what we struggle with is fear. And in second Timothy one verse seven, it says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I want to pray that for you today. So father, I pray for each person listening, watching, and I pray that where we are afraid, we would receive your power, your love and a sound mind. We would exchange, we would release to you our fear and we would receive your power, love, and a sound mind. Thank you for helping us to walk in victory over fear rather than being victims of fear. Thank you for helping us with this in Jesus name. Amen. I love that. And I really know that God can set you free from fear and just encourage you that, that just because God set you free in the past and you might struggle with it a little bit here and there doesn't mean that God cannot continue to do that. Sometimes fear creeps back and tries to seep in through the edges but you don't have to be the victim to fear. What God did in the past, he maintains and can sustain even into our present. So just know that God is able and capable of helping you to continuously overcome fear. And if you enjoyed this classic teaching from mom, make sure you hop on the website, get on a call on the phone and grab the rest of the teaching. Such powerful classic teachings from mom. God's word is always relevant. We pray you were enriched by one of Marilyn's classic Bible teachings. Have you ever wondered where God is when you're afraid? No matter your fear, God provides a way to overcome it. For your gift of $29 or more, we will send you the classic DVD teaching by Marilyn, Where is God When I'm Afraid? In this timeless message, Marilyn looks at the lives of biblical giants like Abraham, Joshua, David, and Esther. Learn how God helped them overcome their fears and gave them great victories. We will also send you Marilyn's Read It, Speak It, Do It book and her Breaking Free From Fear booklet. For your gift of $90 or more, we will also send you The Names of God Afghan. This beautiful blanket will fill you with faith and surround you with warmth. Be encouraged. You can have victory over all your fears. Call or click today for this anointed resource.